welcome to church this weekend. This is week number indefinite of being in quarantine, and we have been working tirelessly on what does it look like to get us together, but to get us together safely. Obviously, our government has been giving us some guidance, and they've even up and dated that. Well, this week and what's going to be looking like moving forward, some of you are praying about that because it requires you to wear a face mask to leave your house. But regarding phasing and what Stacy and I are doing, we're going to update you here in just a few seconds on what that looks like. But church-wide, Sunday school classes have actually begin, began to meet. So if you have not connected with your group yet and you weren't aware of this, please know that they're meeting at different times. So connect with your Sunday school teacher or your small group teacher. Um, if you want to be a part of one of those and you're not, please contact the church office. We would love to connect you with one of them. They're meeting at random times, but they are getting together in a very safe way. So regarding phasing, Stacy has something exciting to talk about in regards to our kids. Yes, so over the past few weeks, uh, during morning uh, worship here in person, we have been having kids' church, and this looks a lot different from what uh, we've previously done in the past, but our kids are getting together to worship in the morning as well as hear from our kids' worship lesson. Um, and the kids have loved it, and they get to have fun together um, in a safe environment that allows the parents to be up in worship and worship together as a whole. And as kids get together, Jason has some very exciting news about how he is going to be getting together with his teens very soon. Yes, very soon, meaning not just coming week, like not tomorrow, but the week after next, the first full week of August, we will be getting together for our annual, like 40-ish something annual Itty Wicto. So if I tell you, will you come to our happening, an amazing week-long event where we're going to be all outside, we're taking all the precautions we can to ensure that we get together and we worship and we engage and have fun and we encounter God. The theme this year is really just asking the question, what if I talked about myself the way Jesus talks about us and who am I? I am his. So it's going to be an amazing week. Um, in the comments below, if you're online, um, there is going to be the link so you can go register for this as well. Um, if you're in person, please ask me any questions that you have. But it's an exciting week. Tell your friends. Mark the date. The whole whopping $20 this year um, for the entire week. And that includes a, a really awesome canoeing trip at the end. So it's going to be absolutely amazing. But thank you so much for sticking it out with us. We know that there have been a lot of decisions made for you in this season, both by your church leadership team, by our local governments, our national governments. Um, but here soon, within our own church, actually, next Sunday, you're going to be able to make some decisions of your own. And Stacey's going to tell you quickly about that. So our annual society meeting, which would typically have been held a few months back, um, but due to COVID, we pushed it back. And it is now August 2nd at 6 p.m. in the sanctuary. Um, so if you are a member of the church, you have the obligation and the right to vote um, on some decisions that are going to be coming up um, pertaining to our next board year and our next church year as a whole. So we encourage you guys to come out again August 2nd at 6 p.m. in the sanctuary. Yes, and let's let's give you a We're here to worship. You were here to worship. You were like, let's get it going. And today I'm excited. Uh, Gabe, our intern, Gabe Taylor, is going to be leading us in worship with uh, actually a small, intimate team intentionally this week. Gabe, I just want you to know real quick, hear from me how proud of you I am. People, this guy has been amazing. If you get forgot last weekend, um, he had his youth ministry team, the, the team that I lead, his band happens right over here in our youth's building. Um, leading us in worship. Dude, I'm so proud of you. Thank you for how you're leading us. Today's going to be a great day being led by Gabe as well as Pastor Scott is bringing us an, a very relevant message about how we can come together as a community and then we're going to worship again. So let's begin worship right now. Gabe, I love you, man. Why don't you go ahead and take it over? Hey, good morning. Thank you for joining us. Uh, I'll give credit where credit is due. Last week, I asked Evan to step up um, and kind of lead the youth band a little more. I took a step back. I didn't have to open my mouth if I wanted to. He did everything. Um, as far as picking the songs and keeping us organized and did all that. So if you see Evan, uh, tell him he did a good job because I'm super proud of him. He's got a heart on fire to serve, and he's a natural leader. So if you see him, be sure to tell him that. All right, uh, we're going to go ahead and get started in this worship. My goal today is to engage you in authentic worship, however that looks for you. Uh, we're going to invite you to remain seated today, but if you want to sing along, that would be sublime. I was buried beneath my shame Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my tomb 
till I may. Oh, I was breathing, but not alive. All my failures I try to hide. He was my tomb. Till I met you, you called my name.
There's no shadow you won't lie on, mountain you won't climb on, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, guy you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you sounds so beautiful. Would you mind to sing that with me just one more time? And oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love. Oh, it's... My soul, my Savior, God, to Thee. How great Thou art! How great Thou art! Then seems my.
Father, we come before you humbly and wholeheartedly. Thank you uh, for the blessings you've given us, the freedom and uh, the time that we have set aside that we can come here and worship you, God. Um, we know that you are good and your love is, is so relentless. There's nothing that stands between you and us. And we thank you for that, God. In, in a time that, that seems so scary, for lack of a better word, with, with riots and sickness and everything out the door, God, we know that you are in control because you are God, great and faithful, and we are not. Your hope when we need it most and even when we don't. Peace when we need relief as well. And we thank you for that, God. Let our hearts be open to what Scott has to say. If there's anything that you're trying to tell us, God, don't let us run away, but let us accept that and be content. We pray that you will pursue us relentlessly, and you do, so we thank you for that, God. We thank you for sending your son to die on the cross for us and that sacrifice that you made so that we can live again. It's in your name we pray, amen. Amen. Thank you, Gabe and Ashley and Jared, for leading us in worship today. Uh, it's, it's different times, and I'm uh, Associate Pastor Scott Psalm. Uh, Mike is on vacation this week, so I'm out of my lane. Normally, I'm with the Celebrate Recovery peeps, so um, just glad you're here or glad you're joining us online. You know, during this pandemic, a lot of people, you hear uh, the terms loneliness and isolation, and uh, it's probably more vital than ever for us to be connected. And one of the things we, a few weeks ago, we challenged the church body to be intentional about getting a prayer partner, someone that you could connect up with a few times a week and share concerns and prayers. And so I think that's, I thought that's where I wanted to focus today. You know, uh, have you ever felt alone? I was thinking, you know, during this time, uh, there's been some challenges, but um, I thought back to uh, my childhood when one of the times I felt the most alone, but there were people all around me. It was a little league baseball game. I was a left-handed second baseman and uh, two outs in the last inning. If we get the third out, the game's over and we celebrate. I don't know what, what we do afterwards. We have a co uh, Coke or something after the game, but anyways, the ball's hit to me. Routine ground ball. All I have to do is field it and throw it to first base, short throw, and the game's over. But instead, I played croquet right through my legs, barely touched my mitt, and everybody's safe. Pretty traumatic event for a little leaguer. Coach calls timeout, comes out to calm everybody down. We have this meeting at the mound. I think even the outfielders came in. I felt like the most lonely person there. No one talked to me. <laughs> it's like, you just blew the game, you know. <laughs> But I don't think the players were all that mean about it. It was more self-inflicted. The loneliness was more self-inflicted. There were people there, and they were, they were supportive of me. My teammates were supportive, but I thought, I am so alone. Well, uh, during this time, uh, we have experienced loneliness too. We may have messed up or let someone down or let ourselves down in some way, or, or maybe we just don't know what's going to happen next, and it may be out of our control. But God has provided us a church body and a church family to come along and be that support system for our spiritual growth and to be there in these difficult times. So today I want to take just a few minutes and look at the book of Ecclesiastes for some guidance. But before I do, let me just say this. If you don't hear anything else today, hear this. There is a God, your creator, who loves you. He wants to set you free from any burdens you might have. I know that because he allowed his own son to die on a cross for my sins and your sins so that we can spend eternity with him. Jesus left his place to come to our place so that we can go to his place. You know, uh, going back to the uh, book of Ecclesiastes, most biblical scholars agree that Solomon was the author. It's a really a unique book, and Solomon is expressing his view of, the, of life from his vast earthly wisdom, one of the wisest men that ever lived. He was the wealthiest king of Israel and the last king before the kingdom split with Israel to the north and Judah to the south. Now life in 930 B.C. Uh, would have presented many challenges. 
even a rich person's life expectancy as compared to today would not be, would have been much shorter, would not be like today. There were wars, there were famines, there was disease at that time as well. And kings of that day, they really didn't value their citizens uh, or their people. You know, if you were conquered by a country, most likely you would be a slave to those who occupied your land. Ecclesiastes is just Solomon's candid assessment of life and its meaning. And he really comes to this conclusion that without God, life is meaningless. You know, some people spend their entire lives trying to figure out what the meaning of life is, what their purpose is, what will make them happy. You know, what is it? A lot of people try through different things and and different uh, 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 items that they may buy or they may try. But Solomon had everything in excess. In his pursuit of the meaning of life, he uses his worldly wisdom. And we know that because many times the phrase under the sun is used. In fact, 29 times in this book, emphasizing the limitations of this world and its wisdom. There's much to unpack really in this book. And today I I just want to focus on a short passage. And it's found in chapter 4, verses 9 through 12. And the heading in my Bible says, Oppression, Toil, and Friendlessness. And as we navigate through this time of pandemic, it's not good to do it alone. We need each other. Of course, we need a strong vertical relationship with God. But we also need those horizontal relationships that, that from people. And those relationships of our Christian brothers and sisters. And they can provide us encouragement, support, and accountability. You know, most often this scripture... Uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verses 9 through 12, you hear at a wedding. And so you generally you hear this passage from Genesis 2.18, where it says, it is not good for man to be alone. And then, uh, I probably can't count the number of times I read this passage when there was a couple behind me or to the side of me braiding some ropes together. Some of you can think of that imagery. But in the context, there's a man, uh, right before this, he's talking about he's working hard in his business, but he doesn't have a son, he doesn't have a brother, he's doing this on his own. So Ecclesiastes 4, verses 9 through 12. Two are better than one, because they have a good return for their work or their labor. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. But pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. Also, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. So we know in life we're going to have these times where we're going to have to work hard, where there's going to be hard work. There's going to be times we fall down, times we are cold, times we feel beat up or overpowered. Maybe all of these are happening right now during this COVID-19 pandemic. And maybe you feel each and every one of them are just one of those. But in life, you will experience those things. You know, I can think of many times in life where we had to work hard. I grew up in a family that that was, a, that was kind of a given. You had to work hard. And most tasks go much faster and are completed more efficiently when two people are working together. I can think of many of our painting projects when I was painting by myself how long it took. But when I would uh, do the cutting and Phil would do the rolling, my son-in-law, man, we could paint a room so much faster. Everything just went faster. But I'm one that I like to try and do it myself. A few weeks ago, I was working out uh, in our woods, and I had a a garden tractor that I use specifically in the woods, and I I abuse it, really. I run over stuff that I shouldn't with it, and uh, I broke a bolt in the steering. And so I went to my collection of junk and old bolts, and I found a bolt that would fit. And I thought, okay, I'm going to fix this. And so I jacked the tractor up, and the wheels kind of are on a pivot, you know, and that bolt has to slide through there, and... I tried for probably 15, 20 minutes, maybe a half hour on my own, trying to get it. And I just need, I, I needed another hand to hold. I even tried to balance it with a board underneath it. I just couldn't do it. So finally I broke down and went in the house and said, Connie, I need my wife's help. And so she came out. I, I bet it was less than five minutes that she balanced the one side. She was the extra hand and the job was completed much more efficiently. You know, we have times where we might fall down as well could be a physical fall, could be something emotional, it could be a time of stress, a, a disappointment, it could be a moral failure. Many times we describe uh, a sin as a fall, you know, where someone's been tripped up or they fell down. 
Uh, sometimes it can be something like, say, physical that's uh, out of our control. Uh, again, uh, probably a month or so ago, I had to spot on my arm, and I, I looked at it, and I was like, well, that doesn't look good. It's kind of a black, irregular shape. That, it kind of screamed like, go to the dermatologist, Scott. And I was like, no, I'm going to look at this myself. And, and then it just got sore, and it was a deep pain. It was, felt like it was going right down to my bone on my wrist. And I was, so finally, after probably a week or so, maybe 10 days keeping to myself, I told Connie, I said, I may have to go to the doctor for this. This is... This is really hurting bad, and she, and she even agrees, ah, that doesn't look good. Well, then it kind of split open, and I just kind of nursed it for a few days. And then one morning, I was kind of messing around, and a, a sliver about three-quarters of an inch long came out. That was the end of the black head, and I was like, it was just a thorn. And I thought back, and I was like, yeah, when I mow, I stick my arm up all the time to block the brush, and I'd stuck a thorn way down in my wrist. So it wasn't. So... I went back to Connie and celebrated with her and said, look, look what happened. It wasn't, it wasn't anything at all. It was just a thorn. And so we were able to share that praise together. You know, there may be a time in your life when you find yourself in a cold place. And I don't like to be physically cold. I don't like it when I'm in a dark, cold place in, in times of life either. Um, perhaps you're in one of those times now. Or maybe you feel overpowered, as the text states. Uh, sometimes there are things in life outside of our control that overpower us, and we struggle with which way do we turn because we feel outnumbered and overpowered. Well, what does Solomon say here with all of his wisdom? What's the solution for each of these four situations? He gives four advantages to not going it alone and to having a, a partner, someone to team up with. It's clear that two are better than one. In a work situation, uh, it will increase the reward. Two can really, they, they, two people can live cheaper together. And many people, I've, I've heard that, we'll get married on that basis because we can live together cheaper. You know, you can combine resources. Uh, many people in exercise find that having someone to walk with or someone to run with as a partner helps them to be accountable and to pass the time and to be an encouragement. I know from many of our youth uh, service projects, I can think back uh, when we went down to help with Hurricane Katrina relief many years ago. Uh, we'd pull the bus up and unload. All these teenagers would go out just like uh, worker bees and ants, and they would take care of the project just like that. Whatever we were picking up, brush or debris, and sometimes I would have to take and... Um, I, I get out thinking, I'm going to help, and then I was like, hey, we almost got the job done. I better get out my camera and take a few pictures so people know what work we did, and they would have the job almost done. So just getting there and having a big group to help out can make uh, so much difference, and I think it makes a difference in our, our spiritual lives as well when we have a task. If you fall, a friend can help you up. You know, a friend can provide help in a time of trouble. If you get into a difficulty, your friend's there to help you out. And that's why church body's called, to come together and help one another out. If you're cold, a friend can provide mutual warmth. And Indiana winters, probably not this week, we're not thinking much about winter. But Indiana winters help us to fully appreciate this third advantage in a physical sense. When, when the temperature is well below zero outside, you can understand what Solomon means when he says, if two lie together, they are warm. But how can one be warm alone? You know, I, I tell you from experience, my calves know very well to stay away from Connie's feet uh, during the winter months because she can just freeze you out. And uh, I gave this uh, pro tip to first service. I'll give it to you as well. And when you know it's one of those nights and your spouse's feet are going to be freezing, you can take the hair dryer out of the bathroom and put it on her feet about five minutes before you get into bed, and it's so much better. <laughs> then you can use her feet to warm your calves rather than freeze you, so... You may feel overpowered. You know, having someone else to fight alongside you can provide a defense. And the, the presence of one or more others in your life makes defeat unlikely. Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. So while there's advantages in companionship, as Solomon's talking about, nevertheless, his argument is still that it adds up to emptiness it does not satisfy the sense of eternity that God has put in people's hearts. We still need that vertical relationship. So that companionship comes alongside us to motivate us to continue on that path and grow that vertical relationship. That's why we need to connect with our Creator, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and grow that relationship. So as I was thinking about this, I was like, 
I wanted to share a scripture that would say, all right, what is one of those passages that say, hey, this is how you grow that vertical relationship. And I, I thought of Ephesians uh, chapter 6, verses 10 through 18, and it's under the heading of the armor of God. So I'd like to read that, and I love the way it closes because it emphasizes prayer again. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you've done everything to stand... Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And then he closed with, and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. That admonition for us to continue to pray, continue to lift up those requests, continue to communicate with God. I've been focusing on Romans 12, 12, and I shared a little part of this message on Facebook uh, this week. It, it, Romans 12, 12 says, be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, and faithful in prayer. That's just a great scripture to focus on during these difficult times. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Knowing Christ is with us gives us great hope. We are not facing anything in life alone. We have Christ with us. Patience, on the other hand, is usually more difficult for us all. Difficult for me. When we live in a time that most of us want immediate change and immediate results, Continuing an ongoing conversation with Christ is one of the best tools to help us remain patient. But how do we remain consistent in our prayer time throughout the week? And it's our, our goal to say that, hey, look, having someone to partner with and to join you in prayer is a great tool to help you encourage one another in doing that. So we're asking the church body, our church body here at Bedford Free Methodist, to be intentional about getting uh, a prayer companion, a prayer partner, whatever you want to call it, someone that you can share praises, you can share concerns and needs with, and join in prayer at a time that works best for each of you. I love this quote from Henry Noun. It says this, Community is a fellowship of people who do not hide their joys and sorrows, but make them visible to each other in a gesture of hope. In community, we say life is full of gains and losses, joys and sorrows, ups and downs, but we do not have to live it alone. So together, we can celebrate the truth that the wounds of our individual lives, which seem intolerable when lived alone, become sources of healing when we live them as part of a fellowship of mutual care. So our challenge, the challenge today, is to get a prayer partner. I want to I just say a few words about that uh, and give you a few instructions. One, keep it very simple. This is not a rocket science kind of thing. You won't have to do a study to find out who should I pray. You know, I mean, some things can naturally happen. But it, it doesn't matter. Uh, you know, some of you may be challenged to say, I'm going to select a prayer partner that I don't know, so I get to know them. Others may say, I, I, I already have a, a friend relationship or a trust with this person, so I'm going to ask that person. But keep it simple. Maintain anonymity and confidentiality. Be a safe place that you can share personal requests. Set a day or days and time or times that work for each of you. So make it convenient for both of you. Use the phone, Zoom, face-to-face, -face, uh, socially distance, of course. Uh, take uh, the ch a church prayer guide to use it. Maybe keep a journal of your prayer requests that come up. And feel free to request prayer uh, throughout the week as needs arise. So you may say, well, we're not scheduled to pray till Friday, but this just came up. Shoot a text or a call and say, hey, can you pray about this now? Or could you join me in prayer? And if you ask someone to be your prayer partner and they say, nah, I can't, or I don't want to, or I don't know, don't, don't take that rejection personally, you know? It's not a personal thing. Their plate may be too full. I remember... 
uh, years ago when we were first starting Celebrate Recovery and we said, hey, why don't we each find somebody to pray with about this? And two or three people said, I got this person, someone in our church body who was really known for prayer. And it's like, wait a minute, you can't, you can't all have that person. <laughs> One person gets to ask that person, you know, ask someone else. So there could be someone that uh, really doesn't have the time to devote to it. But I will say this too. If you can't find someone, feel free to call the office or text or contact one of the church pastors, and we'll be glad to be your prayer partner. We would gladly do that. I mean, I can't think of anything that would bring me more joy than having somebody in our church body call and say, hey, could we get together and pray? I would gladly do that. Now, the thing is, you can share together, but make the focus on prayer. You know, you don't want to be like, well, my... I got together and I talked with my prayer partner for two hours and we prayed for five minutes. You know, you want to flip that around, <laughs> you, you know, talk, talking and, and getting to know one another is fine and share the request, but make the focus on prayer. So take that lead. You know, it's, it's great to have some other tools. One of the tools that uh, Rick Warren developed and we use in Celebrate Recovery is called a heart check. And uh, you could do a heart check with just simply say, are you hurting? The H stands for are you hurting? Are you, the, a or the E stands for a, a E exhausted. Are you exhausted? The A is angry. Are you angry? The R is resentful. Do you feel resentful about anything? And the T is tense. Are you feeling tense? There's other tools you could use, you know, to uh, share. But make sure and kind of take a, an evaluation of a real quick evaluation of what your physical, emotional, relational and spiritual health and needs are at the time when you get together. Now, I want you I want you to think about some people as we uh, wrap up here. Think about some people that have helped you and how you could be that same person to someone else. And you might want to even thank God or maybe you might want to make a phone call or shoot a text today and say, thank you for being there for me. You know, when it was a, a, a place where we had to work hard or when I had fell down or where it was cold or I felt overpowered and you were there for me. So I hope that you're encouraged this day and I, I want you to earnestly seek a prayer partner, a prayer companion to share with. And don't wait. Be intentional about it. You know, we, we set a goal to say we want 100 people or, or we'd like to get 50 contacts this week to say, all right. 50 of us got a prayer partner, and so there's 100 people that are gathering together and sharing. So how could you tell us? You could share uh, with a private Facebook message or a public Facebook message to us, or you could leave a phone call to the office. You could shoot a text to one of the pastors. And again, if you can't find someone and you really want prayer, you want a prayer partner, call us. Text us. We'll be glad to pray with you. So... I want to put that out there for you all. You know, and many times people will say like, well, I, I thought about it, but I don't want to do it. Really, I want you to, to earnestly consider getting someone to be connected. We feel like it's, as staff, we talk about this, we feel it's vital for our church body to stay connected that way and to stay encouraging to one another. You know, because sometimes uh, things fall through the cracks or we don't know what's going on or someone may feel alone. We don't want anyone to feel alone. So we want to challenge us to continue building our vertical relationship with God by expanding our horizontal relationship with others and encourage one another in doing that through prayer. With that said, I want to close in a word of prayer. Lord, we do thank you for friends and family and church family, those whom you've placed in our life to bring greater increase, to help in times of trouble and to give us warmth in times of cold and loneliness. Lord, we thank you for those who... Uh, come alongside to defend us and to encourage us and to lift us up. Lord, we want to be those same people to others. Lord, help us to grow in our relationship with you as we grow and share together and lift our praises and concerns to you. Help us to develop that cord of three strands that is not easily broken. In your name I pray. Amen. <laughs>
Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. We live for you.
Absent from the hopeless thought, what joy this moment brings! I'm free from the pain my sin has brought, from pain and death it stings. As we found out last service, I am terrible at dismissing everybody. So thank you so much for coming. Um, you guys are free to go, and we're going to play you out. And I'm going to stop talking now before I embarrass myself anymore. Thank you so much.